Broadcasting from Salisbury University campus, this is WSDL Ocean City, NPR News Talk 90.7, putting Delmarva first. Stay tuned for Delmarva Today with your host, Don Rush. You may have noticed that some buildings in Salisbury are sporting some murals. They're called public art. Welcome to Delmarva Today. This is Don Rush. Large and small cities have become a little more colorful these days as a trend for adding large painted murals on the sides of buildings takes hold. Cincinnati, Ohio has employed teens to paint murals, having believe some 90 of them since the mid-1990s. Aside from the artistic quality of these works, there is also a sense that they enrich and bring the communities together. In our studio this morning is Mayor Jake Day, who has spent a good deal of time looking at city planning long before he took the job as the city's chief executive. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Don. So uh, before we get into a couple of the uh, murals, what's your overall philosophy about having these kind of murals? What kind of contribution do you think that they make to the community? Uh, you, you know, that that's the critical question, right? It's not necessarily... Um, uh, that we need to have debates about the content or anything like that, and we can. Um, but but the critical question is what does what is the overall contribution? The overall contribution is is um, beautification, and there are so many ways to contribute to beautification um, and to create places that people uh, appreciate and ultimately fall in love with. Um, that that's everything from placemaking, you know, uh, creating spaces or you know through urban design that are uh, enjoyable, um, that are playful, that are fun, um, that are human scaled, uh, that have interesting things to do in them and interesting things happening around them and attract people to them. Uh, it's the the buildings themselves, creating beautiful buildings and creating um, sites that are attractive and have lots of activity going on in them. And then lastly, taking spaces that are essentially blank canvases for lack of a better term and um, and contributing art to them and whether that's sculpture whether that's um, a mural a painted mural I mean that's really less important than the fact that you're adding um, positive and interesting things to look at and appreciate to the built environment because one of the things as a matter of fact looking at the uh, at the history of this I mean some of the mural stuff actually reaches back into the WPA project of the Great Depression that this, this there's a long history of this that's right See, and and stylistically some of the best and most interesting murals that, you know, known in America. I mean, whether it's in, you know, uh, train stations, whether it's uh, in, in public squares, um, uh, or, or whether it's just iconography, things that we're familiar with seeing, even if we don't know where it's from, are from that era. So you have, of course, um, talked a little bit about this. What kind of things do you look for when it comes to having public art in terms of the kinds of things they display? Yeah. Well, I'm a firm believer in um, the mayor shouldn't choose art, you know, and, uh, and, and, and the government, you know, shouldn't be in the business of determining what's good art and what's not. Um, so, so we work with Salisbury Arts and Entertainment District. We work with um, artists in the community. We work with neighborhood groups um, to identify what they want. And, uh, and and groups that are willing to, you know, frankly, put some effort into it, um, you know, whether that's fundraising, whether that's participating in the actual art, artistry, the painting. Uh, we recently had a, uh, a new crosswalk uh, project completed, um, and it's it's water. Uh, it's it's a um, crosswalk that's painted blue with waves and ripples through it. Um, and and the, the folks that proposed it did it. And that's that's the most beautiful thing because it's not, hey, I came to you with an idea. It's I came to you with an idea that I just want permission for, and then I'm going to make it happen. And that's, uh, that's the most exciting thing, I think. But the government has been in the position periodically of facilitating and encouraging certain projects. Some of them that serve, uh, I think in each case, it serves uh, more purpose than just the art. So the Riverwalk um, uh, steel sculpture, for example, uh, the, at the amphitheater. And part of the purpose there is to create a visual barrier as a backdrop to the amphitheater itself between the highway above and the amphitheater below. Um, another example is the Church Street mural. And the Church Street mural, uh, that, that's not just art. Uh, it's art plus um, what I think of as urban acupuncture. So taking a a very small spot and, and project and trying to make a very significant change by um, making that, that dynamic difference in that space, which meant 
you know, going out and doing a public process, you know, public uh, uh, competition, design competition with artists, um, and um, uh, engaging the community in feedback uh, and a dialogue about what they wanted to see. You know, that wasn't selected by a mayor or a council. That was selected by the neighborhood. So it's better speaking of the, the Church Street um, mural. It uh, features a number of uh, people who are important to the community. In fact, uh, as I was reminded of um, a little time ago, that uh, these people represent actually a community to a large extent is actually almost dis virtually disappeared in terms of what used to be uh, a rather thriving uh, African American community. That's right. You got a neighborhood um, that's gone. Uh, you know, the, the Georgetown neighborhood, which once stood uh, essentially um, from the facade uh, uh, on which the mural is painted uh, to Lot 10 in downtown was the Georgetown neighborhood. It was sort of the, uh, uh, the western end of, uh, excuse me, the eastern end of the downtown area today. And, you know, largely carved out in the late 50s and early 60s by urban renewal efforts, uh, which is what the federal government termed the programs that paid for the acquisition and demolition of houses and what they considered to be blighted or slum properties and replaced with highways. Uh, I, I think today we see that that's rarely the right approach to um, urban revitalization and development. It doesn't mean that buildings don't need to be torn down. Sure they do, of course they do. Uh, but but that's not the only thing that we should be doing. Um, and we should be salvaging what we can. You know, The very things that we appreciate most as a society are the things that have some history to them. And if we can protect those and, and use those as we build new and as we add new and as we you know, progress as a society, that makes for an even richer environment and urban experience. But at that location, you know, they, they wiped it out. And what we were left with was some buildings that were in uh, okay shape and, and then one or two that are in great shape, like the building upon which this um, uh, mural now rests. And we bought, the city bought a building that stood in the way of that right. blank facade. And it was the building that housed the shop sex style, right. which is, you know, at the intersection of your busiest two highways in your city, not really what you want. It's like the welcoming sign <laughs> to your community. I don't know, maybe some communities do. Ours, I, don't, I think, doesn't or didn't. And so we acquired this. Uh, the, the person who bought it offered it at a steep discount to the city. We, we rarely accept property that we have to pay for, but we saw uh, an opportunity. We said, yes, we, we bought it. We tore it down. And um, and we turned it into a, a, a little neighborhood pocket park and a gateway site. Um, you know, there's a little area to sit. A um, lot of community uh, members participated in that process. Not only what they wanted to see there, but also um, actually doing their work and, and getting their hands dirty. Uh, you know, from businesses like Lowe's to people in the neighborhood to various city departments. I mean, they all participated in making this happen. And and what we did was we went to the neighborhood and we, we did door hangers and we said, we're going to have an event. Please come out and tell us what you want to see. We're going to do a mural and we, we're going to pay for it and we want to uh, we want to know what you want on the wall. And so people came out and we gave them pieces of paper and with a drawing of the facade and we did uh, we had a couple of historians speak. We had some group discussion about what people remembered from the old neighborhood uh, that was there and from the Church Street neighborhood uh, where this is a gateway into. And, and we said, what do you want to see? And so people started sketching and writing and drawing. And ultimately, the groups made presentations to each other. And then we took that content and we put it all out on the, the Internet. And we said, we're looking for an artist to turn this into a mural. Uh, here's some of the content we're looking for. And ultimately, uh, Sketch Boyd, uh, Paul, Paul Boyd uh, Sketch was selected as the artist and uh, just did a fantastic job. And he's a talented guy. Um, a hardworking artist and did an, an amazing job capturing what the community wanted. Uh, they, they, people all seemed to focus on the, the trains, on the idea that there was once there were once passenger tra trains that came through here. Um, you know, which I think people also would love to see again. But yeah, yeah maybe, yeah. But maybe you know. <laughs> but 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 what he did was he he put young children in there. He made it really colorful, and then he put the history up above, and you know, blue sky. And he, he took these five figures, these African American uh, leaders in their time, that were talked about prominently in this discussion uh, with community members. And they said, "Hey, that's that's who we want to celebrate." You know, if the mayor had done it, that yeah, if I had done it, that may have been 
uh, a mural about Frederick Douglass, you know, or, or, or you know, um, Harriet Tubman. It may have been, you know, something uh, that, that really just didn't speak to people the way that um, a collective effort identified those who were important. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's sort of just a stunning example of listening to people and, and hearing what's important to them and then following through on that. If I look at it, and there are a number of people that you have up there to speak to some of them. There's uh, obviously Sergeant William Butler, who was a World War One hero. Charles Chip Chipman, who also has a center named after him, was a principal educator. Lane Brown, also a high school uh, teacher. Uh, James Stewart, who was actually an African-American uh, community mortician, and Dr. Chief Herbert Simley, who practiced uh, medicine for about uh, 60 years. Tell me a little bit about what, did you have a learning experience when they came up with these names and uh, learning more about them? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a person in our area who hasn't heard um, Charles Chipman's name or his family's name. Um, and and probably there's not a person who doesn't know about the center that's right there that is uh, bears his name. Um, but, uh, but you know, some of the other folks in there, uh, like I got to hear stories from uh, former Councilwoman Shaney Shields about Elaine Brown. Um, I, I got to hear stories from current Councilwoman April Jackson um, about uh, Dr. Assembly and, you know, the impact he had on the African-American community as a doctor, um, you know, who uh, a, a practicing physician in our area, um, you know, um, Delegate Cherie Sample Hughes, now our uh, 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 Speaker pro tem of the Maryland House of Delegates, um, you know this is an Eastern Shore delegate who's risen to an incredibly high position in the state. Um, she, you know, she talked about uh, the um, uh, the impact that um, not only. Um, Mr. Stewart's practice had, but but morticians in general, and uh, the pr the uh, prominent role uh, that they've had on shaping her life and shaping the lives of others. Uh, and then I I just think uh, anytime I can hear people who um, know the stories or have heard the stories passed down about uh, William Butler, um, that's that's a powerful thing. Uh, right. This is this is a man who would have almost certainly been awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions, for his heroism and his bravery, um, conspicuous gallantry, as they say, um, in World War I, were it not for the color of his skin. And the, the, the way that our American government uh, treated our African-American war veterans at the time. And so to know that he is now on a wall um, and that people like Senator Chris Van Hollen are out there fighting um, in Congress right now to have his medals upgraded, um, his Distinguished Service Cross, which is incredible enough as it is, but um, to have that upgraded to a Medal of Honor is is a pretty proud thing. And um, it's hard for me not to drive past there and think about that when I look at his face. Do you think that people who do not come from this area will understand the significance of those images or how does that relate? I mean, because I've been to other cities where you drive by, I mean, street names and just for for openers. I mean, that's true, particularly Los Angeles, where I come from, where, you know, you drive down Temple Street and you later find out it's actually named after a failed banker. I mean, it's so you, <laughs> just to give you an example, oh, there's the, sure. there are certain political uh, figures as well. What? Uh, well, I, you know, what I th what I think is we're, we're going to help that process along. Um, one of the things that I'm announcing in the next week is the creation, and I've already created it, but it's it's going to be announced. We haven't put it out there. Uh, the Historical Marker Task Force. Um, the Historical Marker Task Force, uh, led by uh, Linda Dwyer, a, a well-known historian in the area um, and author, um, she and her team of, I think it's nine members, seven or nine members, they, they are going about the process of mapping, and they have mapped over 300 um, significant incidents, moments, um, places that deserve recognition in Salisbury. And then they are, and that's all mapped on GIS now. And then they are working to create the content and the standard template for design of a series of historical markers that will be uh, all over our city. Um, we, we think it's an important thing to do to acknowledge the history um, and to help people see that Salisbury is not, you know, some uh, city that sprang up out of the ground 50 years ago. I mean, that we have centuries of, of interesting history here um, and that it ought to be celebrated and we ought to talk about it. We're, you know, we're, we're not far. We're, what, a, a little more than a decade from 300 years since the settlement of this community. Um, so 
there's there's some things that are worth talking about and worth learning about. So one of the things that we're going to do is, um, and it's already been uh, designed, is put our first, uh, one of our first historical markers right at the foot of this mural, which will give people a sense of, you know, what was, uh, why were these five people selected? How were they selected? Um, what did the community see that was significant about their history that it ought to be up on a wall, uh, you know, 35 feet in the air? There's an actually there's another mural which uh, I guess it's I believe it's on the Del Marva veteran builders um, structure there the new home for them. Um, tell me a little bit about how that came about and uh, and describe the mural by the way itself. Well, uh, the Believe mural uh, is as you said on the Del Marva veteran builders um, headquarters in downtown Salisbury, which is one of the Pen old Peninsula Insurance buildings. Uh, if people aren't familiar with Del Marva veteran builders, this is a business that. Um, uh, has come up in the last, I don't know, five or six years, uh, but was one of the Inc. 5000 fastest growing uh, companies in America last year. Uh, this is a, a company that's grown by leaps and bounds. Um, and you can see that as they filled out this uh, rather large building in downtown Salisbury. And on the, on the wall, um, uh, and this is a, a vertical surface that's perpendicular to Market Street um, as you're headed eastbound in, in downtown Salisbury on Market Street. You'll pass by this thing. Uh, right across the street is the um, city-owned parking garage. Um, a work of art in itself. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to, to, to some. Um, and, and the Believe mural is this... Um, black uh, wall with the word believe written on it and a little girl blowing a flower and just every color in the rainbow um, you know, on this flower. And it is just a splash, excuse me, the splash of color that's absolutely beautiful. And um, the cool thing about how this was done by Desiree and Brandon, the artists, um, is that uh, they asked people to come participate. So you could go and, and paint. So I actually took my daughters, Lily and Olivia, and we each painted uh, one of the petals or part of one of the petals um, on the Believe mural. And um, the neat thing is, you know, it's going to last, I mean, even without a touch-up, I'm sure it would last 30-some years, and I'm sure it will also be touched up or, you know, improved at some point if it needs it. Um, so my kids are going to, you know, be adults and be able to see that and say, when I was a little girl, I painted part of that mural um so it's the artists um went went beyond over and uh over and above what i think they had to do by trying to draw people in and say you can participate in in this art and i thought that was really special what was it like to be part of painting this mural which as you suggest will probably last for a long time yeah you, they usually do and, and the fact that yes that you have your your child helping you out well i got to tell you um you know, it was in the middle of uh, the election, so I was busy. Uh, you know, you think uh, you think you know what's important, and it's like, okay, I got to get over there, and I'll bring the kids, and you know, we're in a rush, and you know, we get there, and then you get a paintbrush in your hand, and it's a different feeling entirely. It's uh, you know, time kind of slows down, and it's like, oh, this this is what's important. And so we got to play and laugh, and uh, they had their kids there running around. So it was, it was a family experience. And, and those are the moments, I think, that also help you to fall in love with a place. Uh, you know, we're in downtown Salisbury, which when I was a kid, you know, uh, the thing that made me feel like it was special was it was where you went to get your hair cut and where you bought your shoes for school. Uh, mm -hmm. But the truth is there wasn't much else going on. I, you know, I didn't have many other reasons to fall in love with downtown. And I like that, you know, my kids will have a story where they participated in something uh, that was uh, creative and um, memorable in the, the sense that they're not likely to do that too many other times in their life. Is there cohesiveness in terms of vision, in terms of these murals, and obviously some of the art, or are they mm -hmm. individual things that, that occur? I mean, do, does that, I mean, I guess there's a potential for fragmentation as well. I mean, for, what, what, what about that? It's a great question. There, there, co there is cohesiveness in that um, you, you need more than one or two to have created a changed landscape, mm -hmm. but, but there is not thematic cohesiveness. And I think that's desirable um they're not being thematic cohesiveness because i don't i wouldn't want us to get into a mindset that um this should be a government project because government projects have a way of becoming stale and stuck in time and so so 
my instinct is certainly to be programmatic and, and focused about it, which, you know, you could see that in, um, uh, urban Salisbury's steel sculpture efforts. There are, um, uh, nine steel sculptures on posts around downtown. Um, and they are individually attractive. They help create a sense of cohesion. But I think if that was the only way that we allowed art to be in downtown, it would get very boring very quickly. And so instead, you know, having the transformers, the electrical transformers that are painted uh, and each, you know, the artist has done whatever they wanted on that um, on that box. And it represents the artist, the murals. They're not connected necessarily in their content. The um, the steel sculptures, the Riverwalk Amphitheater sculpture, the Bloom sculpture, which is a new sculpture that's been recently created uh, at the corner of Market Street and Circle Avenue. Those sorts of things are um are, I think, uh, best because they are not part of one disciplined programmatic effort, but rather contribute in their own way. Um, I'll, I'll point out another one. There's a mural known as The Kiss that's up high on the fourth floor of a, an apartment building in downtown Salisbury and just sits up there. And I don't think anybody asked permission. I don't think anybody... <laughs> You know, nobody even talked about that. It was just done one day by an artist. And, and, and that's, an, that's okay, I think. I think that's great. Oh, and let me not forget the, the, the very challenging process that um, we as a community went through to paint books on the side of the library as a mural years ago. There was a lot of pushback on that from the Historic District Commission at the time um, as, you know, we, we can't allow this sort of thing. What could it lead to? And, and look, you know, art's blossoming all over, uh, you know, like like little flowers around downtown. You know, I mentioned it, it's actually in the introduction that, uh, like Cincinnati, for instance, uh, apparently some 90 murals, uh, and they actually encourage, I guess, uh, and they employ teens to help out and paint them. Do you see this as like just the first step in, in something that could be as large in, these, in terms of proportion to the city? Yeah, I, I do. Um, you know, I, I was I was doing a little math before we started, and there are 30 pieces of art, 30 uh, paintings, murals, uh, or sculptures in downtown Salisbury right now. Um, so, you know, what Cincinnati did in in 25 years right. to get to 90, you know, in, in 10 years, we've gotten to, or 15 years, we've gotten to 30. Um, and we're a city the 10th, a 10th, the size of Cincinnati. So I say, let's keep going. Um, I do think this could continue and this could be, um, uh, part of our, our, our hallmark, you know, what is Salisbury and defining who we are, that we're a place that embraces creativity and that allows freedom of expression. Um, I also think that identifying new ways of executing that um, and, and adding that art, whether it's, you know, sculpture programming that says, here's a space that we're looking for a uh, sculptor, an artist to put something, you know, whether we define what that is or not, but also, you know, allowing for vertical murals and having that, and then also doing something like the transformer boxes or uh, painting intersections, painting crosswalks, which we've allowed um, and has been managed through our friends at Arts and Entertainment. That, that, um, that is, I think, ought to be the limits of our boundaries, you know, saying here's the sorts of things that we're looking for in terms of spatial uh, uh, planning, but the content is, you know, to the artist to be de defined. So um, I, I certainly think this could spread. Uh, and then obviously geographically in my mind, it spreads. So, you know, it starts at the center and it radiates out. Um, and I don't, I don't want to say that we're near the end of what we would want, um, at, in our core, but I do think we're at a point where we can start pushing that geographic envelope. We now turn to the artists who created Believe. It is Brandon Bell and Desiree Martin. They created the mural that's on the side of the Delmarva Veteran Builders, a new home on East Market Street in downtown Salisbury. I appreciate you stopping by and chatting with us this morning. Thank you for having me. So uh, to either one of you, what was the inspiration for this, uh, for this mural and the idea about Believe? Essentially, Chris, myself, Desiree, we all shared, like, as most people, we, we know we deal with hardships, struggles, and things like that. Chris has a huge 
uh, personal belief and just the concept of believing itself and believing in the impossible, believing in the unseen, believing in you can achieve your dreams and aspirations. So when he reached out to us to do this, that was something that was like a common principle that we even shared ourselves amongst our like we believe that we were able to do a lot of things we put our minds to. We knew we've never done a mural like this of this size, <clears throat> but we knew we could do it. He believed in us. And that whole idea was like this is something that we know that our our idea of believing in ourselves we've seen ourselves go from you know if you will rock bottom to sky high so it's like we wanted to instill that in the community as best as we could and we did it with hopefully in a very artistic way but we just want everybody to know with that piece that you have you've, you've got to believe if you want to make an impact you want to make a change you want to make something happen you got a first first very first step is believing it's possible now the mayor has obviously described the mural itself where did the idea of having this young girl uh, essentially blowing on a flower. That, so it came after many renditions. It wasn't just the original first idea. We did, we did a back and forth with Chris of our first idea. He kind of gave us an idea. We jumped on it. We mixed and matched. Eventually we ended up with this. It's kind of funny, but the final result was almost the very kind of first idea we kind of had. And it was just, it's a very whimsical piece, if you will. She, you know, she's essentially it's almost like making a wish you know children are very it's it's kind of like a common theme we've seen which is children especially picking up dandelions and things of various other flowers blowing them usually they're instructed by an adult at, at some point probably pick up one make a wish so we wanted to do essentially combine that concept of our little girl who's constantly saying what she wants to do what she believes in and basically trying to showing it you make a wish and it can turn into a beautiful piece which is the flowers on the side of you a beautiful piece of work if you let it so, so what has what your daughter said? Is she, is she aware <laughs> of what's going on? She <laughs> is. She's, she's starting to understand that she's a little kid that's on the side of the wall, and not many people have that experience. I don't think it's really hit her yet, but she does appreciate it, and especially when it was in the progress. You know, we had events going on, like the National Folk Festival, and people would stop by and be like, oh, my goodness, this is the little girl that's on the... And she um, had no problem telling people either. Yeah, that's me. And that's me. the mayor, that was one of the people that she was like, "This is me. That's me on the wall." Yeah, they had a chance to meet outside of it one day. The mayor came by with his two daughters because we had a community flower, so we let everybody. We try to let as many people as we know to come out for various nights to paint a piece of it to add to it, so the community could kind of add their own little touch to it. We left one sunflower blank. The mayor came by with his two children, and Addie had a chance to meet him right then and there, and it was really cool. They got a photo taken, and it was. It was just perfect timing, kind of thing, because Addie just so happened just so happened to be out there that same day with us. Couldn't bring her every time. <laughs> so, what, so what do you hope to have come out of this in terms of the community, in terms of people seeing it, and an impact on the community? Do you think it'll have an impact? Definitely, Definitely believe that there's an impact. Um, I think there already has been one. We are very um, very involved with the youth and the idea of what can come from this next generation and she has definitely showed us that you know you, it doesn't take an adult to um, to know it doesn't take you being an adult to know what you want to do it's like little kids already have it in them I want to do this I want to be this and if we can push that and get them to see that and believe in them I think that helps boost their um, boost their morale and get them, you know, to want to do the things that they're ready to do. More than just children, like the whole idea of the piece itself, believe, we want the community to like know like this, hopefully this giant piece being put up by, you know, thanks to Chris, hopefully shows people the belief that your city, like people, you should be proud where you're from. There is a lot of good things happening and taking place. And this is hopefully like a visual representation of like, just keep up keep believing like we we've talked about before we we've, we've talked about relocating we both have lived across the country and we've made our way back here and we've made a firm commitment to like we're, we're, neither of us were born here but we love it here we want to raise a family here and we believe in the area enough to know that we can make a change and effectively like it's you take your problems with you why not take where you are from put your flag in the ground and make it as best as you can well, we've been speaking uh, first with uh, the mayor, Jake Day, about the uh, new murals that are going up around the city, as well as Brandon Bill and Desiree Martin, who created the large mural that's actually on the side of the Delmarva Veteran Building. 
uh, the new home on East Market Street in downtown Colbo Leave, and we appreciate you all taking time to speak with us this morning. Thank we you. appreciate you having us. Thank you so much. This has been Delmarva Today. I'm Don Rush. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching Delmarva Today, a production of Delmarva Public Radio. Production and audio engineering by Chris Rank. Hosted by Don Rush. For podcasts, visit DelmarvaPublicRadio.net or subscribe to the Delmarva Today podcast on iTunes. You can also watch Delmarva Today on PAC 14 by tuning into Comcast Channel 14 or YouTube.com forward slash PAC 14.